Hi guys, I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be painting a flower and I'm just going to be using three colours, the three primary colours, ultramarine, cadmium red pale and lemon yellow. It can just be a combination of any of them. I'm going to be concentrating on colour mixing and brushwork. I'm going to be having lots of fun and I'd like you to come along on this journey with me. Maybe it's enough to encourage you to get your paints out. To say to my students years ago, a sky a day keeps the art teacher away. Not that I want that to happen. If you've got any comments or questions about the materials I'm using or the techniques that I'm doing, please don't hesitate to ask me and put them in the comments section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Right, Shall we get on with it? So here is my beautiful reference photo from pexels.com and I'll put a link in the description below. So here are the materials I'm going to use and a full list of these will be in the description below. So once you finish your drawing, you can start painting. So what I really want to talk to you about in this video is my process when I'm painting flowers. I always paint to start off with wet in wet using lots of water with lo lovely wet paint as you can see here i'm only using three colors cadmium red pale lemon yellow and ultramarine so for the flower i'll be using mostly red watery red creamier red so that's where i get my darks from for the leaves i'll be using the yellow and the blue maybe with a touch of red and for the shadow colors and for the dark centers i'll be using the red and the blue i'll keep it as simple as that so you don't have to worry about color mixing and all the time you can actually be concentrating on painting Many of you have asked me in the comments section about how wet things are, etc. And I just wanted to really explain things here. If you really look, you can see there's a really big puddle there on the right. And now I'm putting quite thick, creamy paint in the middle of that petal there. The other thing you might have seen me do there, I literally just drop the paint in, hardly touching the paper. I find that's a really important thing. It stops you fiddling, stops you overworking the paint. So here you see I'm just pulling out all that puddle to the right hand side of that petal. So to gain some control I'm using a bit of kitchen towel and I'm lifting off some of that puddle So and actually that gives me some light which is a really important thing because sometimes the paint moves so much you can lose your light. So I use the kitchen towel to take the excess moisture off and as you can see here now I'm using my apple twig and I will give you some information about that in the description below. You can use any twig and I, I sharpen it with a pencil sharpener but what I'm doing with this apple twig is I'm actually pressing it hard into the paper so the paint goes into the scratches. Just bear in mind that once you do this, you can't go back. If you're not sure about it, once the painting is dry, you can paint those marks with a small brush instead. That's the beauty of watercolour. There's lots of different ways you can achieve things by using different techniques. So I'm using the yellow and the blue now, mixing it up sort of to get these leaves. I've wet the leaf first and I'm just pressing down this paint to get these lovely effects. So on the left hand side, I put quite a limey green. So yellow first, touch of blue. And on the right hand side where it's a bit darker, I've started with the blue and added the yellow. And I'll continue this process all the way down with the leaves. As you can see, there's a little bit of red that's run into that leaf. I've left it because I quite like it. So as you can see, just with these three colors, I've added a little bit of red in the yellow to warm it up a bit. It and it just gives you that sort of warmish green but I'm just dropping these colors into a wet or sort of wet dampish surface and it just creates these wonderful effects and I'm just dropping in this lovely darker green just letting the paint flow into e each other as well so I'm just wetting the buds now using exactly the same technique dropping in the red that's at the top and then I'm going to just mix up some lightish green and drop that in and just let the paint do the work. Don't do too much yourself with your brush on the paper. Just mix the colours, drop them in and let them flow into each other. It's as simple as that. The hardest thing to do is be patient and not to paint, to hold back. Hold yourself back so you don't overwork your painting. So getting on with a little bit more of a scary bit is actually going back into damp paint. So what I'm doing is I'm going back in with thicker paint. I'm just using the red on its own, nice, thick and creamy, and just putting it in where the darks are. The paint will still move, 
but it won't move as much because it's damp into damp. However, you can see there's a little puddle on the right there which I'll need to deal with. But I'll ignore that at the moment and just continue putting this creamy paint onto the damp surface. So I'm just wetting this flower behind this main flower and I'm just catching that petal and I'm using the colour and the water to actually go into that other flower. There we are, problem solved. I can continue painting now and let, can you see how that paint is flowing into that flower behind? That's one of the reasons why I love watercolour so much because you can really do all those beautiful things and the way the paint just moves on a wet surface. You can see it here. I'm just sort of pulling down that top main petal into all these little buds and flowers behind and now just dropping in creamy paint. So this is damp into wet this technique so there's lots of different techniques going on here because each petal each bit of the flower are all at a different sort of wetness if it makes any sense look at that isn't it glorious just watch that paint move so that's damp paint moving into wet so the wet sort of pulls it towards it and it's just a marvel to watch so if you're doing this please just give yourself time to see what the paint does and enjoy the process because it is wonderful and it's so therapeutic. I'm wetting these bottom leaves now using exactly the same technique, wetting the surface first, make it, making that light green and then I'll make a darker green by adding more blue. It's as simple as that but let that see let that paint just sort of merge and let it do its own thing. So I've just mixed up some really creamy paint. That's the ultramarine and the red. It makes a sort of a muddy gray violet. And I'm painting this on a damp surface. The, the middle of the poppy is almost dry. So the paint has to be creamy or else you're gonna get huge back runs. You may have noticed there's lots of back runs or blooms in my flower. And that's because wet paint has run into drying paint. I quite like that because it creates those natural sort of petals, the edges of petals and everything. So it works for me in this instance. So I'm just continuing, just painting these darks around the center of the flower. And now I'm using a damp brush and just pushing that dark into the center so it gives it a soft edge. And then that paint is gonna just fuse out a little bit. So it all looks kind of creates a nice shadowy color. So here's a really nice tip for you. I'm just using the corner of the tube of paint and I'm just using it similar to how I would use the twig and I'm just scratching into the surface of the paper. Again, be careful because these marks are permanent. I'm just now using a smaller brush, my size four pointed sable and I'm just painting red to create some of the veins on the petal. Then I dilute my brush and just use that water, not too wet, just to soften those so they don't look too harsh. So I'm about to put the darks in. This is just thick, creamy red paint and I'm put, painting it in damp into damp, really. So this paint, as you can see, is not moving at all. 
So in watercolour painting, we work light to dark. So this is the business end of the painting. I'm starting to put much darker details in. The centre here is damp into damp. I'm just pulling out some stamens and marks with the end of my paintbrush. And where the paint is going to bleed here, I'm going to pull off that with a tissue to get me the light back. And I'm just putting in some more veins now. So just building up this detail. So I'll continue putting in darks here. The paint's almost dry, so it's damp into an almost dry surface. You may get a little bit of a back run, but I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm using a blue, yellow and a touch of red to make this lovely dark, shadowy green colour. Here and there, because I love texture, I'm just dropping in some water as well. So it creates lo lovely, exciting effects, get the paint moving in some wonderful, exciting ways. I'm just going to continue now painting the darks on the flowers, building up light to dark, damp into damp. So, I mean, obviously I might get a back run because I'm dropping in water as well because I love all those lovely textures. So just using the red on its own. I did want to talk a little bit about the brushwork that I'm doing here. I'm sort of really pressing down hard on the paper. It gives these kind of wonderful sort of effects. I'm just using the kitchen towel here just to stop a run. I quite like the run where the red's gone in the green, but I just didn't want it to be too much. I'm working pretty much wet on dry in most areas. Some, some other areas are still damp, but I'm putting in the darts now, just building up, to getting towards these final details. So I'm just painting in the centre of the flower here, just with a little bit of a warm yellow. That's the yellow with a touch of red. And I'm just putting in a bit of dark on this bottom flower here, damp into damp. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about this brushwork where I'm pressing down like I am here and twisting. It just does these magical things with the paint. You get these lovely lights and darks, the way it kind of sort of blends in. So I do have a go at that. You kind of really hug the brush with the paper and twist it around so it lifts off some light, but it also puts some dark in areas. And I'm doing the same here with the center of the flower. Again, using my twig to create some textures and detail. I'm using a thick, creamy ultramarine now to paint the, the dark and the shadow of this flower and just dropping that in damp into damp, adding a little bit of red as well because it looked a little bit too bluey then, it stood out too much. And this is quite exciting because it's sort of bringing this flower to life here. I'm just painting now some of the details on the leaves with ultramarine, a little bit of yellow, just to create a slightly darker green. I just want to put a bit of shadow on this leaf here. It looked a bit pale, so I'm just putting in a little bit more colour, wet on dry, and then dropping some water in as well. Putting a bit of dark underneath the stems as well. Just that little bit, it just brings it to life, doesn't it, putting on the darks. Remember, don't be afraid of the dark. So I could leave the painting here, but I've decided to kind of give it a bit of a soft background. And I'm doing that by actually using a damp brush and pulling away the slightly almost dry paint so you can actually manipulate it. Remember, watercolour is not permanent, so you can actually sort of wake it up again. So I'm just dragging down here to create a nice sort of soft background colour. I felt the centre looked like it needed a touch more detail so I'm just spattering in some creamy red paint. You can see I've got a little splodge in the background there. Never wipe it with your tissue first. Always put some clean water on first then wipe it with the tissue otherwise sometimes you're left with a you know a mark that you can't get rid of. I think I'm finished there. I'm just putting a mount on just to have a look at it. You can be very objective looking at your painting to see if you need to do any more work to it but I think I'll leave it there for now. So I hope you enjoyed that step-by-step -step demonstration. And I've got the finished painting here. So I'll make sure I've got it the right way up. Here it is here. 
and I'm quite pleased with it on the whole. Remember, I only use three colours here, two brushes. I just wanted to keep it really simple in the end, and I'm quite happy with the result. Thank you so much for watching my channel. I hope these videos are inspiring you. Thank you so much for watching again. Happy painting. Bye for now.